we review week one and preview week two of the 2014 season. This is Mark Simpson here at the conference office moderating today's call. And before we begin, we'll open up with our announcements and news and notes going into uh, this week. First, our players of the week from uh, this past weekend, the Choice Hotel's Offensive Player of the Week was Monmouth running back K.B. Asante. The Big South Defensive Player of the Week, Coastal Carolina, Coastal Carolina linebacker Quinn Backus, who was also named a National All-Star by College Sporting News late afternoon yesterday. Big South, Big South Special Teams Player of the Week was Monmouth kicker Lucas Santangelo. And the Cron's brand Freshman of the Week, Liberty running back Todd Macon. In addition to Quinn Backus' honor yesterday, other notes from the first weekend. Mamas K.B. Asante was the first Big South player to score four touchdowns in a season opener. Coastal Carolina moved into the top five of both national polls yesterday. Liberty's Jacob Hagan becomes the Big South's all-time leader for fumble return touchdowns. Second career return Saturday at North Carolina. Presbyterian's Donnell Williams, he owns the highest ta active uh, tackles per game average in the Big South at 8.5 per game. Liberty's uh, Chima Yuzawahi reached a sack milestone, uh, double digits in his career, which has uh, happened just by 19 players in league history. Colts of Carolina's Bruce Mapp tied a school single game record with 10 receptions Saturday at the Citadel. Coming up this week, Coastal Carolina, Gardner Webb, and Liberty continue their seasons uh, on the road. It's been a long time since all three has opened the season with two straight road games. Presbyterian's hosting its first night game at Bailey Memorial Stadium this Saturday. And Charleston Southern is the first program in Big South history to open the season with four consecutive home games. They have the second of four this Saturday as they host Newberry. Those are just some brief notes to pass along as we uh, begin with our first coach of the morning, the head coach of the Gardner-Webb Roman Brennan Bulldogs, Carol McCray. Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning, Mark. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Hope you're doing well. Brennan yes, Bulldogs, sir. a defensive struggle with Furman, falling 13-3. to A couple of uh, injuries that plagued uh, Gardner-Webb. But uh, if you can open up, talk about the Furman game, and then you head back on the road going to Wake Forest this Saturday, we'll talk about the Demon Deacons, and then take any questions. Okay. Well, we certainly, uh, you know, did not represent the Big South the way I wish we would have against uh, a Southern Conference foe. You know, we want to take a lot of pride in representing our conference uh, when we have the opportunity. And, um, you know, as you said, it's a deep defensive struggle. Um, you know, not much touchdowns uh, scored in the game. They scored one. We had the ball down on the one-yard line. And then with a the mental error, you know, we're pushed back, had to settle for a field goal. So, you know, we had some opportunities during the ball game to, uh, you know, make, make hay down there pretty close in the red zone. And uh, we had way too many inconsistencies offensively, uh, mental errors and things that held us back. So, you know, Farmer's got a good football team, but, uh, you know, we did not fare as well as we should have uh, by doing the best we, we needed to do with mental concentration that uh, – allowed to some mistakes. Pretty pretty even first half and uh, had an opportunity with uh, just three seconds on the clock to kick a field goal to make it uh, a 10-6 ball game, I think it was. <clears throat> At halftime, we missed a fairly short field goal and, uh, you know, could have got a little momentum going into halftime. We did not do that. And uh, come out in the second half, you know, they were able to get close enough to kick uh, one field goal at, I think, 47 yards and uh, that that was all it took to hold us off we just did not challenge them and make enough plays <clears throat> offensively to uh, make them have to make any moves at all we didn't put any pressure on them uh did feel like defensively we settled down with a lot of young kids they played better in the second half and we got some valuable experience and some of them uh, fared very very well so uh continue to build on the good things and try to get more consistent offensively is a real key for us uh, overall, our kicking game, we were pleased with some progress we made in our coverage teams and our return teams. Uh, so on we march. But uh, into Winston-Salem this week, um, came out of the ball game about like we went in the game as far as our health. We did not lose anybody. 
that we felt like was full speed, uh, we're still happy with a couple of our key guys and don't know if they'll play this week or not. Uh, speaking of Tanner Birch and uh, Kenny Cook, so uh, we feel like Tanner will continue to be out and Kenny's in a, a real question mark right now. So we've got to have some young guys continue to grow up in those areas and uh, get better as we go and uh, eliminate some mental errors. But uh, Wake Forest, the team that played last Thursday night, uh, went down to Louisiana Monroe and uh, had a 10 nothing lead, I think, at halftime and ended up losing 17-10. Uh, is, a, is a team that's uh, in transition with Coach Clawson. I think that, uh, you know, certainly his reputation precedes him. Fine football coach, you know, at Fordham, Richmond, and Bowling Green. Uh, at, at three schools, he's won championships in four different conferences. So, you know, he's in there to uh, uh, put Wake Forest where everybody wants them to be. Uh, they played with a freshman quarterback last week, so they're grooming some young guys. A uh, real big offensive line, as you would imagine, as you play a Division One team, and I would characterize them defensively as uh, long and lean, a team that can really run, uh, had a middle linebacker uh, and an outside linebacker that had uh, 30 tackles between them. So a very active defense, and uh, I've been really impressed with uh, their schematics and their special teams. I think their punter is outstanding. And I think their special team gives them a real edge as they head into uh, the rest of the season um, and move forward. So, big challenge for us. You know, main thing we got to do is try to get Gardner Webb better and go represent uh, the Big South in a much better way uh, as far as our mental focus as we head to Winston Salem. Thank you, Coach. At this time, we have a question for Gardner Webb head coach Colonel McRae. To ask a question, please press star one on your phone at any time. Or click the Q&A link near the top of your browser. And click raise hands if you join us via the web. Questions for Gardner Webb head coach Carol McCray. Hey, coach. First question for you is from Matthew Clark of the Daily Courier. Okay. Hello, Matthew. Coach, how are you this morning? I'm fine, thank you. Um, talk a little bit more about Tanner Birch, uh, Birch and Kenny Cook being out or questionable. Uh, you know, neither one of them I don't think played at all on Saturday or very little. Uh, Tanner, you said, is probably possibly out. Kenny is questionable for Wake Forest. How big yeah. of an impact, uh, uh, this is the obvious question of the day, how big of an impact is that going to be on your team going into a, a hostile environment like Winston-Salem? Well, I, th I think, you know, any, any time, you know, you got two older guys that uh, <clears throat> have played a lot of football, you certainly you need them if you can get them. Uh, Tanner uh, is a shoulder injury from uh, practice last week. And we did not have all the information to know how bad it was till very, very late in the week. He was definitely ruled out for last week. And we're getting the final word today to see the direction that we need to, to go with him. He is out for this ball game, and uh, we're going to make some big decisions about his future as we go through the week with the information we get from the medical staff. Kenny did play some and uh, played a little bit into the second quarter and then could not play anymore. Uh, I think you know we're trying to see how far we can push him, or do we just need to sit him down and rest him until he's completely well? It's a real high hamstring, and you know those receivers with all the running and all that. He has uh, got markedly better uh, the last ten days, but re-injured that thing, reaching for a ball in the second quarter, and uh, was not able to go back and play in the second half. So. Tanner's definitely out. Kenny, I think, very questionable, and I, you know, I put doubtful for this week is what it looks like at this time. Who do you look at to fill the, the, both their roles? Well, I tell you, we're, we're kind of using a whole group of guys. To be totally honest with you, we uh, had linebacker. We played the true freshman, freshman Kenyatta Dunbar out of Strom Thurmond in South Carolina, and then Aziz Higgins played in there uh, to replace Tanner. And then uh, offensively, you know, the whole core of receivers we went ahead and played several true freshmen last week uh, because Kenny could not go. Uh, Deontay Swinton's had to take a larger role in what we're doing. Uh, we've had to use our tight ends a little bit more than maybe we had anticipated using Estes and Cranfield to get into some formations that uh, normally we would probably have receivers. So we're going to have to ask our young guys to step forward. Uh, Willie Jackson, the fourth out of Alabama, had to play last week. Ralph Jolly out of Shelby, North Carolina, played. And we're going to uh, just continue to push those young guys forward until we see uh, exactly where Kenny is going to stand or when he can come back and execute at full speed. 
Um, and, and, and coach, you know, you talk about the consistency on offense, which which wasn't there on Saturday. Does does Kenny's absence obviously have a big, uh, big, big factor, big role with that? Well, he certainly has a big role in what we do, and. Um, <clears throat> You know, he's a guy that is talented enough to kind of get us going, you know, sometimes when we're maybe spinning in mud a little bit and uh, did not have that available to us. So I, I think the biggest thing is to really put the hats on the right hats and uh, do a lot better job executing on first and second down, you know, where it's a simple pitch and catch or, uh, you know, a simple run play where we've got to get the hats in the right spots and uh, make sure we move our run game forward to help Lucas out as we grow some of those receivers. But, uh, yeah, any time you don't have your, your number one weapon out there this year, then uh, certainly you've got to grow some people up if you want to have any consistency. And uh, that has something to do with it, but there were other factors in there that uh, if we would have done proper, that I think we could have executed and put some pressure on them where they had to make a move in the second half. and. We could have gotten that thing back to one score. It would have been nice to see what our guys would have done. Coach, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Hey, Coach, I'm not seeing any more questions for you, so we'll let you go. Okay. Good. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you all, and uh, good luck to all the coaches and the teams in the Big South this week. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck Saturday week. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Starting with that week 4, 6.30 p.m. this Saturday on ESPN3.